begins again. Hi, I'm James Hollywood Machikari. Join me Monday through Friday for Motorcycle Mayhem Morning Show on YouTube Live, Facebook, and all major podcast platforms where we talk about all the major biker news going on in the scene. Rock on! Hey, what's up, you hooligans? Welcome to a special Sunday edition of Motorcycle Madhouse Morning Mayhem. You guys are probably just waking up over there in that YouTube chat room, man. Hey, 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 man. Hit that super chat. Two bucks goes a long way for this show. If not, hit that PayPal button, man. So, holy cow, what a weekend. I put on a video over on Instagram, and my email hasn't stopped. I think I pissed on some Wheaties, baby. Think I did. I did a video. People were asking, and it's been quite a bit, and there's this one particular one that's been emailing me like every single day. So I finally answered them. And it had a deal with riding clubs. He's pulling on my nuts, saying, Hey, Hollywood, would Insane Throttle sponsor a riding club? Well, I think I gave a pretty damn good answer to that in the video. You know, I didn't write back. I just put the video up. That way he knows it's coming for me. I said, really respectfully to the guy, that if I was ever to sponsor a writing club, there had to be a few things that I would look at before I even considered a proposition about doing something like that. See, I don't put a lot of sponsors on this show. And the reason for that is sponsors, they get all up in your business. <laughs> they try to tell you what to do, try to tell you what to say. Oh, well, you know, you were doing this and that, and, you know, we don't, you know, f don't go along with that. Well, too damn bad. That's why I don't go with sponsors and rely mostly on uh, contributions from our listeners. So I don't have to go that route. Shit. Just look at Joe Rogan. Spotify, you got employees and everything trying to get him blacklisted because he just signed an exclusive deal with them and they're not even showing some of his episodes because they're calling him uh, uh, homophobic or a white supremacist stuff like that so that's what happens when you go with an exclusive type of deal and the same thing happens with sponsorships I get sponsorships opportunities almost on the daily on the daily and I've only really chosen Bagger Syndicate Cycles as one that I'll put on the show because I believe in the product that, you know, my hats I get from there. And there ain't no issues. But some of these other ones, they're pretty mainstream. Hell no, they wouldn't like my show. They just want to get their product to you guys. And that's it. But... When they hear something they don't like, they're going to be on the phone calling me. That's why I know I'm a radio show. I'm supposed to get the sponsors. That's why I don't do it. Too, much, too many headaches. And I'm too freewheeling. Could you imagine if they wanted to do the Hollywood and China Dow show? Oh my God, they'd flip nuts. With what we talk about over there, they just like flip shit, man. So anyway, I guess I pissed on some Wheaties. A couple conditions I put out there if I'd ever even think about doing it was, one, the riding club would have to be a chartered club of the AMA. And that one set everybody off. Why are you talking about the AMA? You know, why do you support them? Well, for one, guys... And gals, 
not everybody who watches our show are into all the MC stuff. They're not, yeah, we give the news, but that's only what's going on in the scene. I've told you guys many times, over and over and over again, that there's more to the scene than just clubs. Yeah, I'm talking about a riding club, but I really like the AMA because I'm a gearhead. I love the racing. I like motocross. I like off-road. I like flat, uh, flat track. The whole nine yards. Plus, they're a motorcycle rights organization, and they give some hell of a benefits to their members. So why wouldn't I like them? Because something that was supposedly set in the 60s or whatever the hell it was, or 40s, whatever, it was, when and wherever, that only 1% of bikers are like that, you know, and then the club started. Why do I even care? Seriously. What do I care about something that was said decades ago? What I do know is they're a good organization for motorcyclists. Again, they have tons of benefits, they have tons of sports, and that's one thing I'm into. I'm even into the rocket freaking racing, man. I love that crap. Anything that has to do with two wheels, I love. And the reason why I would support something like an AMA club is that club could put on events. I believe you have to have 10 members in your club to be able to do sanctioned events. Unlike, you know, I used to be a huge NASCAR fan before they got woke, as I call it. But I'm a huge supporter of local tracks. I love going to the local tracks and they're disappearing all the time. And that has the same to do with local stuff as far as motorcycling events. When's the last time you heard about a hill climb? When's the last time the national flat trackers came to your city? You know, uh, me, I would have to travel four hours away for the Springfield Mile. It would be awesome to have, like, a riding club that puts on, you know, amateur events. So that's my thinking when it comes to, okay, if I put the brand behind a club, a motor or a riding club, that's AMA chartered, that's what the company that I have would expect. I'm not going to sponsor some kind of riding club that only does it to get a patch. That's not me. Because I do know a lot of people that do do that. They're just doing it because they don't want to go the MC route. Most of them now. I'm not talking all of them. Most of them. They want to skirt all the protocol crap and all that stuff. They don't want to do it the right way. Any of that. A true riding club though. And like I said, it's not all. But a true riding club, you got all aspects of the scene in there. It's not only cruisers, but you got sport bikes that's involved in it. And you go out and have a good time. Uh, the Chicago Cruisers, for example. They got scheduled rides they go on. They're with the AMA. So it's not like, you know what? Let's be honest, I had my fill of this MC stuff, man. <laughs> I'm getting too old now. You know, too many people say something that uh, they don't follow up on. They, you know, you get something together. Next thing you know, it all falls apart because they don't want to do this or do that. That's what happens in most motorcycle clubs. I just want to be able to get together with a group of guys and ride. That's what I like doing, and I know a majority of my audience likes doing the same. 
they don't want to get involved in all the crap. And I hate to say it for all you hardcore supporters of clubs and club members, that's not the scene. You know, yeah, you hear about it on this show with all the news breaking, but a lot of people, they just want to ride their motorcycles. They want to get into everything. They just don't want this particular thing. So it kind of took me by surprise when I was receiving the emails to that video. Well, you know, you're a traitor to the cause and blah, blah, blah. I still support motorcycle club rights. But when it comes to business, that's a totally different thing to me. And a lot of people don't understand that. When you put your name of your business behind something, you want to make sure that it's good for your business, for your brand. That's why I chose to say, well, I'd go with the AMA uh, Charter Club maybe, if they have a track record of putting on events, or if not only events, but they got a lot of writing going on. They got a lot of charity work happening. <sighs> What's wrong with that? <coughs> Excuse me. Whatever the beef was with the clubs and the AMA, that's a beef that's theirs. <laughs> it's not mine. I like the organization. Again, I like uh, what it offers people. And I really like how they go to bat for people in the motorcycling world. There is a ton of stuff that you probably don't know that the AMA is involved with. They're on a national level. Everything from autonomous vehicles, which a bait does too. Well, what's autonomous vehicles have to do with, you know, our rights? Well, you know, an autonomous vehicle don't have anybody driving and could run your ass over on a motorcycle if it, you know, is not calibrated right. There has to be rules to that. So they fight for it. They fight for emission standards. They fight for frickin' uh, ethanol that destroys everything. Why, oh why, you want to put ethanol in your crap? Uh, at least put an ethanol remover into it. So they do a ton of stuff, just like Abate, which I'm a member of. MRF, which I'm a member of. And that is quite funny when I come back and say, okay, you're calling me a prick this, prick that. What organizations are you a part of? That help the motorcycling community out? Or are you just one of them guys who just want to bitch and moan? Oh, this is the way it's supposed to be. I'm sorry to say, and to all the club members, because I know you, a lot of you guys listen to me. MCs are, again, just a small part, man. They ain't everything. Actually, they're the minority. A lot of other bikers enjoy a lot of other stuff. I'm not going to sit here like other channels and talk nothing but MC stuff. I, I, sure, I do a darn biker news, but my video blogs, you don't see me talking about clubs except the last one where I don't know where people's fascination comes in with them. Yeah. A lot of people are looking for brotherhood. A lot of people want to belong to something. Well, great. Beautiful. Go do you. But when it comes to a business, uh -uh, you got to be picky about that type of stuff. There ain't no damn way I would put my logo on some schlucks. Hell freaking no. You know, they got to believe in... Kind of like what I believe in, man. I love the uh, organizations going over there and advocating for motorcyclists. AMA has to be, it is the largest, I think. 
It's been around since 1924, for Christ's sakes. Yeah, it's had issues during its time that it's been around. But every organization has that type of problems. <sighs> it is. It's funny when you piss on some weeder. Wheaties, it's just like that hater I get. Every video I put up, he'll hate that son of a bitch. <laughs> And it's funny, they don't got the freaking balls to actually come on and say, Hey, I'm the hater. Here's why. No. They're cowards behind a keyboard, man. And, uh, you know, and most everything is internet-based right now. So could you blame me if some RC started off the internet to put my shit on their stuff? Like I said in that video, next thing you know, I'm getting all kinds of freaking calls from clubs saying, you sponsored this club, why are they doing this, why are they doing that? The I ain't dealing with that addict. Again, everything is local when it comes to that stuff. Do I believe uh, RC is a true one? are good clubs hell yeah i do if they're true to what they want to be if you want to get a patch and you want to act like an mc well then you're gonna have freaking problems man you know i think rc's you know should wear a one-piece patch maybe you call me old but you know one-piece patch forget your white rockers forget uh Saying you're from this state or that state or this city or that county. Why deal with the headaches? Do they got to be blessed? You'd have to ask one of the protocol channels because I don't get into that stuff. Uh, but I do know a lot of M AMA clubs don't have any issues. Because most of the other clubs don't want to associate with them anyway because they're AMA chartered. But there is a lot of damn old clubs out there that are really freaking cool. Like Yonkers or Rebel uh, 13. They've been AMA for their whole existence for over 100 years or something like that. That I think I find pretty damn cool. <laughs> so, you know, I just wanted to put that out there. You know, a lot of people have been hitting me on that. And everybody knows I don't shy away from my feelings, my opinions. Yes, I support the AMA. I think I've never hid that. I've always said I believed in AMA, MRF, ABATE. Uh, and there's a lot of different people that listen to me. And it, it, it is kind of disappointing with the biker news that, you know, the clubs are involved and it's usually bad stuff, even though I try to put some good stuff on there. But off air, as I'm a right, come on, I got a fat boy and then I got a Suzuki. And my favorite bike happens to be the Boulevard, the Suzuki. And I've said a million times why it's my favorite bike. I don't believe in falling into a group. I don't believe in that. Well, you have to ride a Harley, and that's the best bike, and I don't fall into that stuff. That's just not me. You know, if you got two wheels, I think that's the best thing in the freaking world. And if you expand your horizons into a dirt track, that's even better. And now off-roading's getting huge. AMA has a lot of off-roading uh, chartered clubs. And there's a big sport there. Hell, I was watching Adam Sandoval's uh, videos of him doing the, the Transcontinental uh, Trail. Or the Transamerica Trail, whatever the hell it's called. That was some cool ass riding, man. You gotta be really skilled to do that kind of stuff. It's a special breed who gets into that uh, kind of sport. Just like hill climbers. Hill climbers kill it, baby. You know, when I went over to that, you know, I've showed it on Instagram and stuff. When I went to a former, uh, it's called Big Hill in Wisconsin. 
And and I think it was 39 and 40. They used to hold the hill climbs. I looked down that damn thing. I was like, man, they got some big ass balls. And, you know, in 39 and 40, they didn't have the most powerful bikes around. You know what I mean? But that's the sport of it. I really love it. So take it as, take it as it is, man. You know, you're pissed, you're pissed, whatever. Go uh, jerk off in the corner. What can I freaking tell you, man? Uh, so that is my monologue. Hopefully puts a lot of freaking questions to rest. You can't say I didn't state my damn opinion now, okay? You know, I'll probably get another hundred emails after this one of just freaking haters. But hey, at least I know I'm doing my job. Let's go to the news. Get your most unbiased and trusted biker news now at HarleyLiberty.com. Founded in 2012, Insane Throttle Biker News has been the place that all bikers come for what's happening in the scene. Go over now and bookmark HarleyLiberty.com. Rock on. KPLC, the Buffalo Soldiers Motorcycle Club, helps clean up the Ritter. Now, the Buffalo Soldiers, we talk about all the damn time, man. Uh, they're a really awesome organization. They're really community-orientated. If you don't know their history, go learn it. Go learn it. So let's take a listen. It's been made already. Many communities across southwest Louisiana are still picking up the pieces Hurricane Laura left behind, which is why some bikers decided to help. KPLC's Rania Court reports. It's not every day over 100 bikers are riding around in Ritter. Sharing a name with the African-American soldiers who fought in the U.S. Army post-Civil War, the Buffalo Soldiers Motorcycle Club came to make a difference in Ritter. We're just a bunch of people who ride steel horses, our motorcycles, and we do good in the hood. We go to different communities and we make things happen and change the community for the better. Motorcyclists from all over the country, including Louisiana, Texas, and even Alabama, came to assist in cleaning debris left behind by the hurricane. Right now, we're going to continue to work in and continue to put in debris out on the street. And we're going to feed people today, right, as well. So people who come out, we're going to feed them and take care of them that way too. It's help Mayor Misty Clanton says the Ritter is thankful to have. We faced a lot of damage. Um, and the remnants of this storm will be something that we look at for a long time. So we are very thankful that groups like the Buffalo Soldiers and many others have come to our community to help us clean up and to help us see a little bit of normal again. Because there's still a long way to go. You look around and there's still a lot of blue roofs. Uh, there's a lot of tarping, a lot of, a lot of property damage, a lot of debris left to clean up. Um, so we still have a long ways to go, but I am very impressed at the progress that we have made over the last month. At your service, Rania Cork, KPLC 7 News. Man, that's just an awesome story, and that goes to tell you, or actually show you, when our communities need us, the bikers are there. You know, the Buffalo Soldiers, they're active every mayor. And every time you hear about the Buffalo Soldiers in the news, it's about helping the damn community. That is just some awesome stuff. Hope, you know what, I really wish the mainstream media would show more of that than all the bad that happens in the scene. Because bikers, man, they're just freaking awesome people. It's about riding your motorcycle, enjoying it, and helping your community. That's how I describe the, a biker. Man, you got to love them. Anyway, let's go to our next one. Uh, we we t covered this story, and this was one of the biggest shootings in Iowa history, the Courier, building where uh, shooting took place not authorized as an after-hours establishment. Uh, the editor's note on this, the story has been updated to clarify that H-A-A-L-L-C owns buildings occupied by local businesses, but does not own those businesses. Waterloo! Years before an unlicensed after-hours club became the scene of one of the largest shootings in Waterloo history, the establishment at the corner of West 4th and Washington Streets was known as a local watering hole. 
From the press box in the 80s, famous for its pizzas, the Benjamin's Pub to Barney's, the spot at 501 West Street or West 4th Street was a fixture of the community. That changed when the bar, half of the ground floor of a two-story building that includes a tattoo parlor and upstairs apartments, stopped operating in uh, early 2013 and its liquor license lapsed. A new operator tried to relaunch the corner as uh, Club Fire, but wasn't able to obtain a liquor license because of zoning changes. Then it talked about how it was a pipe shot. Uh, the neighbors were a tattoo shop, residential. Uh, then the, poli- or the fire rescue chief goes on. I wouldn't know what activity is going on in a lot of buildings in town, I guess. And then... You know, it just goes in the city code, violations. Basically what it's saying was it didn't have a business operating the, uh, deal. So that's just to give you kind of an update on that, where that shooting happened. Now we're going to talk about a cop nab biker suspect in $600,000 theft. Alleged grim, re- and this is out of the Millard CCP. Alleged Grim Reaper's MC gang member caught at Veterans Affairs facility in Salt Lake City. A man wanted in connection with the August 8th theft of more than $600,000 in Delta was caught by police at a Salt Lake City Veterans Affairs facility. Shane Harris, who also goes by the nickname Sawdust, was caught after local detectives alerted several hospitals to be on the lookout for the suspect. Harris, 65, was booked into the Millard County Jail. Quote, he had gone up to the VA. He checked himself in because he wanted to get some pain meds. Our investigators had put word to different hospitals that if they have contact with this person to hold him, They have police up there, the military police up there. Usually they called when he checked in. Our guys went up there and picked him up. He faces multiple charges, including a first-degree felony theft, two counts of second-degree felony obstruction of justice, and a third-degree felony vehicle burglary. These charges were upgraded on Monday by the county attorney's office to reflect a gang enhancement. Ouch. The enhancement uh, stem from uh, Harris' alleged involvement with the Hells Angels affiliated motorcycle club. The charges stem from an alleged theft that took place at uh, a tire repair in which the shop's owner also faces criminal charges. The caper unfolded after a man identified as BG in court records and his fiance moved to the area earlier this year from Cali. The couple brought with them cash proceeds from the sale of real estate and other funds that combined total more than $600,000. Curiously, the couple chose to stash the cash in a spare tire in the back of their vehicle. Zoo felt at some point allegedly befriended BG, who had uh, sought the tire shop's assistance. The man asked Zufelt uh, to break the beat on his spare tire so he could receive some cash. Sheriff's investigators allege in court records that the following month, BG asked uh, Zufelt to perform some mechanical work on his vehicle. That's when uh, he was allegedly able to get the man away from the shop long enough to allow the spare tire to mysteriously disappear. Why would you leave 600 G's in there? Holy crap. You deserve to have that stolen. Uh, BG called police when he returned home from the shop later that day and discovered the spare tire contained in his nest egg missing. He, uh, Zelfeld was questioned on multiple search warrants later issued, including for records involving numerous phone calls. These telephone records combined with surveillance video and other evidence allegedly linked Harris to the caper. An affidavit just made public Monday contains this line. SMS messaging records and call records have been obtained from AT&T that show a lengthy and frequent communication history between Travis and Chain. Damn. 
<laughs> you guys gotta look at that caper. 600 grand stashed. Like I said, he deserves it. Let's go overseas. Ah, here we go. A press release from NSW. Senior OMCG member charged over allegedly attempting to access child abuse material. Ouch. Yeah, we got a freak. That's nasty. Man, he kind of fits into the wall of shame right there. I think we should put him in there. Uh, have charged a senior uh, member uh, of the Satadura outlaw uh, motorcycle gang following an investigation to offenses related to accessing child abuse material. In June, the State Crime Command's Criminal Group Squad's Strike Force Raptor received information that a man who is known to police was allegedly attempting to access child abuse material online. Following extensive inquiries, Strike Force Raptor investigators arrested a 38 year old male at a home in Showfields about 6 a.m. Search warrant was executed at the property where a phone and laptop were seized for a forensic invest or examination. Police also discovered a reptile that was in urgent need of veterinary care. Uh, he was a senior member of the OMCG, was taken to Riverstone Police Station where he was charged with attempt to use carriage services to access child abuse material. Yeah, we got a club wall of shame right there, man. <laughs> Holy cow. Now, good news, good news. Blackbusiness.com, Harley Davidson's first ever black female technician. Rock and roll, man. Growing up, McGowan has been surrounded by family who is fond of motorcycles and has made an influence on her since then that she decided to apply for a job at a Harley-Davidson store two years ago. Eventually, she was able to buy her own motorcycle that she has always wanted to become a better rider. Also, with the eagerness to know how things work and fix them, she has decided to be trained as a technician. Just last month, she graduated from the Motorcycle Mechanics Institute with a specialty in Harley-Davidson, making her the first black woman to do so. Rock and roll! Congrats on that graduation! MMI is pretty good stuff. Quote, I'm the first African-American female technician to work on a Harley-Davidson. You barely see any black technicians working on a Harley, but here we are. Man, there's a hot-ass black freaking parts girl over at the uh, Kegels. Oh, my God, is she hot. McGowan is grateful that the Harley-Davidson community has shown inclusivity. Aside from her, she also knows a lot of female riders, including her mother, aunt, and cousin. Despite that, some people still discourage her because of her gender. Why? If you know how to work on that bike, work on that damn bike. Most men don't know how to work on their bikes. But she continued pursuing what her dream really is. Quote, I was told by a lot of people to just be a nurse. Instead, McGowan continued, don't listen to anybody that shuts you down from your dream. Do not, because they don't know you. They don't know where you come from. Rock and roll, man. Paris McGowan, the 25-year-old from St. Louis. Congrats on your graduation. And congrats being the first... Uh, Black female to work on uh, oh, Holly Davidson's. Now, here's what I was telling you about a little bit about the AMA, and I bet most of you don't even know what the hell I'm talking about here. But here's a federal action alert, and this is the stuff that affects motorcyclists, again, that you probably don't know about. Bill would cap ethanol in nation's fuel supply. H.R. 2540, the Bipartisan Food and Fuel Consumer Protection Act, Introduced by U.S. Reps Bill Flores, uh, he's a Republican out of Texas, and Peter Welch, Democrat, out of Vermont, would cap the volume of ethanol blended into the nation's fuel supply at 9.7% of the total volume of gasoline. The AMA supports the bill. Then there's the RPM uh, Act reintroduced in the U.S. Senate. Uh, recognizing the Protection of Motorsports Act, 
uh, by Richard Burr and Joe Manchin of West Virginia would ensure uh, that converting motor vehicles into competition-only vehicles remains legal. It goes on and on and even gives you a thing on how to communicate with the government. So, it's not only sanctions, races, and all that. It also does a lot of, uh, you know, advocating on behalf of the motorcyclists. Let's go to China Doll from Hollywood and China Doll Evening Show. Join us Monday through Friday, 7 p.m. Central Standard Time on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and YouTube for some fun times and very interesting entertainment. See you there, boys. Oh, yeah, you got to go over to Hollywood and China Doll's YouTube channel. We have some freaky uh, conversations over there. Freaky ones Monday through Friday. At 7 p.m. Central Standard Time, we're also on Spotify and all that good stuff. So, lots of good news, some bad news, but you know what? How the hell do you stick $600,000 in a tire? Oh my god, then you tell them where it is. You wonder why they got sticky fingers, man. I gotta say, man, hmm, man, 600 grand. I'd have done it better where you wouldn't have got caught, but, <laughs> but, I think you deserve that one, man. I, I hate to say that, but that's just stupidity, baby. Stupidity. With a capital S. Woo. Uh, again, uh, black, uh, uh, my fault, uh, Buffalo Soldiers. They do all kinds of good around the community, like I was saying. I always support the Buffalo Soldiers, man. They're, anytime I can find an article that's talking about them, that's good. Yeah, it's. I try to get it on the show. I try to get it on HarleyLiberty.com. Spread the word. That way people know there's a lot of clubs out there that are doing good. They really are. Uh, as far as that Iowa thing, man, I think that's just, you know, they're playing on that. Uh, they get more views and stuff, you know, because a club was involved in it. I think that's what they're doing to it. Uh, as far as that uh, overseas, man, what the hell is wrong with you child abuse some material, man? You belong in a wall of shame. You know, damn, man, you're a biker. What the hell's wrong with you, you freak? I hope your club guys knocked the hell out of you, man. Uh, as far as uh, my monologue and AMA stuff, hopefully you guys, uh, you know, got the point. <laughs> Were you not, hate, you know, sending the hate mail and stuff? I think I explained myself just well, you know. Like I said, uh, I support AMAs, and uh, what's it to you? So what? Everybody's got their personal opinion. But... Anyway, uh, I do got a video blog coming out on Wednesday. It's titled, What's More American Than a Biker, Baby? Hell yeah, what's more freaking American? Gotta love it. Anyway, don't forget to uh, like and subscribe, all that good stuff. Thanks for the donations uh, via Super Chat and PayPal. Love you guys to death. I'll talk to you guys later, baby. We'll